Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And on this channel, we're huge fans of watching players compete against one another in WoW PvP. Specifically in the numerous 5v5 1 in 1 duels that we get to host weekly. In the dueling arena, we get to see a variety of different classes and playstyles. And some of the specs we get to see are criminally underrated, especially when they hold so much potential for PvP in the patch 9.2. So in this video, we want to highlight 5 specs that are written off as unpopular. Yet these playstyles will definitely surprise you with their performance in PvP in patch 9.2. Especially when they gain access to full tier sets and the coveted double legendaries. But right before we get into the list of specs, you should definitely try for PvP in patch 9.2. Most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. And if you're watching these videos anyway, you might as well subscribe as well as hit the bell. Especially if you enjoy videos like these for the patch 9.2 or future WoW expansion announcements with a big reveal planned for April, which this channel will cover closely. The first spec on the list that's very much underrated will be the Arcane Mage, a playstyle that probably has the biggest potential on paper when it comes to WoW PvP damage output. Except it's very difficult to line up the most powerful buffs and debuffs together without someone trying to shut you down. This spec is very much a double-edged sword, with likely the biggest damage for PvP, however all of your damage and abilities are in the same school of cast, which is arcane. One single intro can shut all of that potential down, which makes it difficult for many players to find success as arcane in PvP. But it doesn't mean that the spec cannot do well. In fact, arcane mages have some of the biggest execute damage from range. Arcane mages with the bombardment legendary are able to barrage a target with the killing power of a freight train from 40 yards away. Just make sure you never catch yourself critically wounded around arcane mages ever again. Arcane, like the other mage specs, also have lots of options when it comes to the covenant choices and the different styles of play. With Venthyr focusing on control, Kyrian for short time burst, Necrolord with a slow burner damage that grows over time, and Nightfay for the powerful cooldown reduction for both defensive and offensive abilities. With so many Covenant legendaries that are looking to amp up those playstyles even further in the patch 9 too. And they get a ton of value from the tier set bonus, causing you to take more damage when afflicted with the mage's touch of the magi. The spec also has excellent mobility when it comes to PvP, so you're always able to outrun the competition. In the patch 9.1, Death Knights found themselves to be the least popular melee class for all of PvP. And it looks like their luck is slowly starting to turn in the 9.2 update. As a spec, Frost Death Knight does find itself slightly behind, but a lot of people don't realize the potential of this spec once it gains a little bit of gear. With the tier set and the double legendaries, Frost Death Knights could have some of the biggest and the strongest melee bursts in the game when it comes to all PvP content. The soul crushing obliterates and the spikes bursting from the ground are looking to devastate multiple enemies all at once, which further plays into this cleave based burst of Death Knights, allowing them to completely eviscerate whole enemy teams all at once. And that burst damage is not looking to slow down at all in the patch 9.2. Besides this incredible overwhelming burst, a lot of people forget that Death Knights are excellent at control. From being able to stun enemies at range or up close, blinds, silences, constant slows with Chain of Ice forcing enemies to crawl after the enemy team with 70% reduced movement speed. Surprisingly, Death Knights as a melee bring quite a lot to the table. You also get some of the strongest defensives in the game when used correctly. Not the strongest defensives, but when used in right specific situations, you can gain big value. With Anti-Magic Shell, you can immune crowd control outright, Icebound Fortitude able to bust you out of a stun in a critical moment, or drop your dome of Anti-Magic Barrier, protecting your allies from any ranged casters. Death Knights can also have some powerful healing, though this will largely depend on the player behind the Death Knight class. The ability of Death Strike will provide you with more healing after taking a critical blow to your health. It's all about managing the runic power, to always make sure you have that Death Strike available, as well as timing after taking a big hit to your health. Overall, Death Knights are looking like a powerful juggernaut of a melee to consider playing in the patch 9.2. The next spec on the list is gonna be Affliction Warlock. Like Death Knights, Warlocks found themselves to be the least popular ranged PvP spec of the previous season. 
However, in this update, things are starting to turn for the Affliction Warlock. The dot damage of this spec is actually quite strong in the patch 9.2 as you're able to wither down enemy teams over time with agonies, corruptions, and unstable affliction. The PvP talent of Rampant Affliction really does help ramp up the value of your dots. The drain life damage increases with the inevitable demise talent gives you moments of serious PvP pressure and burst. Right now, Warlocks are investing a lot into the drain life playstyle, even so as to run the legendary of Endereth in order to have their drains channel faster. Drain Life is also more effective at draining multiple targets if you play the Night Fae ability of Soul Rot, which lets you drain the life force of multiple targets at once. Warlock as a class is generally durable, with abilities like Unending Resolve, Dark Pack, as well as Crowd Control used to keep themselves healthy. But the Drain Life build of an Affliction Warlock lets them play their crude Vitality Conduit, which massively increases their survivability and self-sustained gameplay. As a Warlock, you also have fantastic mobility, as long as you plan ahead, with spells like Warlock Gateway and Demonic Circle. Altogether, you have a pretty mobile class able to rot enemies from distance, but you also have enough burst and tools to create meaningful burst opportunities. The increased survivability makes this spec feel safer in hectic PvP combat, and together their tier set is looking to amp up their sustained pressure and also extend the duration of their dot damage in the patch 9.2. The next spec on this list is going to be the Outlaw Rogue. The spec found itself to be surprisingly durable, able to stand toe to toe with enemies with talents like Enduring Brawler, which causes the Rogue to become more durable the longer it stays in combat, and PvP talent afloat like a butterfly, which unlocks their true defensive potential. The spec has a lot of ways of controlling your target. Like a Rogue, it has all the stuns in the world. But also you have a blind with a shorter cooldown, which is going to surprise your enemies in arenas, and gouge, which is very underrated at shutting down cast and certain abilities. The damage of the spec also has gotten improved over time, with many players switching to the green skin's legendary, which gives the Outlaw Rogue a regular burst of pistol shot damage, as well as the deadly Venthyr and Dreadblades combo, which is looking to get even stronger once we get the double legendary bonuses. The spec of Outlaw Rogue also has this passive where whenever you invest calm points into finishers, you shave off a few seconds off of your defensive and offensive cooldowns, which gives this spec a wildcard factor, as the enemy team has a hard time figuring out if they are ahead or behind your cooldowns. Their tier set bonuses are also looking to make them even deadlier, both by providing more value from their green skin legendary and also more finishers for even more cooldown reduction mechanics. And the final spec on this list is going to be the Fury Warrior. While some specs deliver big burst damage and low sustain damage, Fury Warrior finds a middle ground between the two, opting in for damage that's better than sustain but not quite as high as full on burst. This damage is enough to pressure the healer and force him to waste a lot of mana, which gives Fury Warrior a pretty big presence within PvP. While this spec lacks a lot of the damage reduction elements that arms may bring, the spec of Fury has a ton of passive self-healing for improved survivability. You get a lot of constant damage from PvP talents like Enduring Rage and Battle Trance, which are further enhanced with the Fury Warrior 2 set bonus, which lands you an extra bonus charge of Raging Blow. Then there's the PvP talent of Slaughterhouse, which puts a healing debuff on the target that stacks up to 40% healing reduction. It does take a little bit of time to ramp up Slaughterhouse damage and the debuff, but it can cleave onto multiple targets, so you can have multiple enemies affected with the same debuff. This playstyle is very rage intensive though, so the 4 piece tier set offers you even more regular procs of recklesses in order to help maintain high rage spending and high rage generation. The Fury Warrior also has a variety of excellent covenants which further augment its damage output. You have the Venthyr Covenant which further increases your sustained damage as well as resource generation together with longer recklessness uptime with the Venthyr Legendary. You also have the Kyrian Burst with a massive damage and focus on crit damage or the Necrolord Burst with the banner increasing your mastery and survivability of Fleshcraft. 
And these are the most underrated specs for WoW PvP that have been written off by most players as unpopular. However, they are likely to explode in potential once they get a bit of gear in the patch 9.2. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and i do hope you guys enjoyed let me know in the comments down below what you think about this list what other specs and classes would you add to this list if you could what other play styles that are very much underrepresented that should probably get more of a spotlight as always if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative go ahead and give it a thumbs up i would very much appreciate it and as always in the description of every single video and live stream we have a link to our discord community channel probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to hit me up let me know what you think about this video or give me some other video ideas for the future and you guys should definitely join the discord to join our community where the rest of the 5511 dueling crowd hangs out in otherwise thank you guys so much for watching this video i do hope you guys enjoyed let me know your thoughts in the comments and as always i'll see all of you guys in another one